Today I'm going to present to you some of the early findings. This project is still ongoing, it's going to carry on next year. Um, we will also be kind of doing some more stuff with uh, talking to children about the way they feel about maths, uh, using, where teachers are using this approach. Uh, we're also going to be using some video evidence and things like that. But the stuff I've got for you today is just from some of the interviews we've done with teachers. And really, we just asked them this question, how do you feel about maths teaching? What are your thoughts on it? So I'm going to show you some of the findings, some of the themes I've pulled out. What, the way I'm going to do it is I've got um, a quote to demonstrate each theme, just one quote. Um, but you have to trust me, but that quote is representative of what the majority of teachers were talking about. First uh, theme, I've called it alignment. So I'll give you a second to read that quote. So this is a teacher talking about the difference between the way she used to teach maths and the way she teaches maths now. It made it right to do it that way, not the old-fashioned way where I'll show you a method and you'll learn it because we'll just keep practicing it over and over again. And really what this demonstrates is something which every single teacher um, kind of expressed in some way or another. What they said was, this way of teaching is helping us teach maths in the way that we actually think it should be taught. Okay, so they were saying, well, there's something about this approach that's enabling us to teach maths in the way we really want to teach it. And that suggests something. It suggests that actually as teachers, you know, if I went back and that I was talking about maths teaching in the UK and some of the problems we've had, perhaps it suggests that maths teachers don't not know how to teach maths, but there are various barriers in the way. And I'm probably sure this week in primary schools, lots of you can kind of attest to one of those particular barriers. <laughs> tests. <laughs> but um, teachers talked about a number of things that had previously got in the way of them being able to teach maths in the way they wanted to. And let me tell you about a couple of them. Uh, the first one, which a couple of teachers mentioned, was Ofsted. It's, it's a big thing, isn't it? We are continually judged uh, by this body, Ofsted. And there are certain things, uh, I have to say, which Ofsted have kind of driven schools into doing, which are perhaps less than research-based. So, for example, uh, triple marking. <laughs> yeah? Um, so one teacher in particular was talking about this, and this experience they'd had, uh, you know, what they described as a fairly negative experience uh, through Ofsted. And they talked about how, before this negative experience, they were trying to, you, you know, trying to teach maths in a way that was uh, very you know, similar to the Singaporean approach. It was using uh, concrete materials, it was exploratory, it was based on problem solving. And the teacher, this one particular teacher, talked about the fact that after this experience of Ofsted, that they couldn't carry on with that. Whatever reason it was, Ofsted had decided that wasn't working for their children. Drill, practice, rote teaching was what they needed. So Ofsted, in the past, has been a barrier. I would suggest it's possibly changing, but this is part of this whole, um, this whole thing we're trying to do in our country, isn't it? We're trying to change people's minds and help them realise what effective maths teaching is. So that's one thing. Another thing, leadership. <laughs> and I'm sorry if you're a school leader. But leadership in schools, in the past, some teachers mentioned uh, several times uh, experiences that they had had about lesson observations. Ah, oh, I remember, I taught this lesson on fractions, right? <laughs> and I let the children discuss it for ages. And you know what I was told? Your behaviour wasn't good enough. It was too noisy. <laughs> and lots of teachers talk about this, these experiences they've had in the past where they were trying to put some of these principles into practice and they were told, because of whatever guidance was out there about an outstanding lesson, that that was not how you teach maths. And so another thing, leadership and the things that drive leadership in a school can lead to teachers feeling like there's a barrier between how they want to teach maths and how they actually can teach maths. The third thing is actually subject knowledge, uh, subject knowledge of how to teach maths and subject knowledge of maths itself. We're primary school teachers. We are not subject specialists, or most of us are not subject specialists. We're expected to teach everything. So you can't know everything about everything. Uh, so the likelihood is that lots of us are not math specialists. In fact, most teachers we talk to, they would say, yeah, I'm not particularly good at maths. Teacher knowledge was a really, really key thing that we discovered when we spoke to teachers. And there are two, two, really as, two aspects of teacher knowledge that we discovered. Uh, this, this quote here demonstrates the first one. So this is a teacher saying, 
Uh, talking about the approach, it has slowed me down because I would have shot through a topic much quicker in the past. And again, the majority of teachers had something to say about their teaching of maths related to the speed at which they would teach things. There seems to be something about this approach that has made teachers slow down in their delivery and in the way they are teaching children mathematical content. Um, if you think about it, in the past, what's one of the real buzzwords about maths lessons, or any lessons for that matter, is pace, isn't it? Pace. And I think this is what teachers are referring to. Um, their pace has slowed down. But does that really mean that the pace of learning in the lesson has slowed down? Or does it just mean that the pace of content delivery in the lesson has slowed down? And this is another question that we have to start to ask ourselves, and this is what lots of teachers talked about. Well, it slowed me down because I shot through topics quicker, but another teacher mentioned, well, it's, it's all about giving them time to think. So the content, the speed at which content is delivered has slowed down, but the actual speed of thinking, or the amount of thinking being done, has possibly risen. And sometimes when people come into lessons and they see this, it's kind of hard to know what you're looking at. Because when you see children spend 20 minutes on one problem, it's kind of easy to think, well, yeah, one problem for 20 minutes? There's no pace, that's far too slow. How are you going to teach everything you need to teach? How are you going to cover the curriculum? Uh, and what they're failing to see sometimes is that actually there's a heck of a lot of thinking going on whilst children are trying to solve that one problem or exploring that one problem. So that's the first thing that uh, we discovered about teacher knowledge, was it's a, their, their knowledge about how to effectively teach maths uh, was growing in the sense that they were learning that slowing down, allowing children more time to think was vital. The second thing, uh, this, this second quote, I think, sums up quite nicely. It's a teacher saying, I've improved my understanding of maths in a different but similar way to the kids. And again, a number of teachers um, expressed this. They were saying, essentially, that it wasn't, it wasn't that they couldn't do maths. They could all do the maths that's required to be a primary school teacher. One of them even said, I've got a GC GCSE in maths. I can do that. I can still do the GCSE stuff. And then she said, yeah, but you know when you do a GCSE, you do the maths, but you don't really know the maths. And it's this kind of different way of seeing subject knowledge. This idea that the teacher's subject knowledge is growing, not, not their ability to actually do the maths, but their ability to understand the many different perspectives that children see a concept from.